Hi, Ben Kingsley here, and today in our how-to session, we're gonna talk about the rewards of understanding scarcity. So as with any type of price setting, the scarcer the item, usually the more expensive it is. So you talk about diamonds, we talk about rare vintage cars, we talk about all types of things. And when you understand that there is demand, and when it comes to property, there is absolute demand. We all need shelter. So we then need to understand how the scarcity component plays in to improving the capital value. Because at the end of the day, we're looking to get the best return we possibly can out of our investment. So here is a group of different types of accommodation available in the Australian market. And sure, there are more bedrooms and, and there's probably one bedroom houses, but it's a great little illustration in terms of what we're looking at. Now, what I've done is I've started with the least scarce item down the bottom. Okay, so high rise and medium density accommodation doesn't have as much scarcity value. Usually when planning is, is um, put in place, the amount of apartments you can build up into the sky is sometimes unlimited. So you can see here that usually it's very easy to bring on lots of supply quickly. So in terms of the scarcity value of this type of accommodation is low. Now, you might argue three or four bedroom apartments are less, um, you know, less in production or there's less quantity of them. And that means that what's gonna happen is there's a little bit of scarcity there. But ultimately across the board, there is low scarcity in this type of accommodation. Then we move up into flats. So flats and, and low rise accommodation. So we're talking anything between say, you know, four uh, right through to say maybe 10 or 12, depending on which city. So in some cities, 12 is a lot, but in other cities like say Sydney um, or Melbourne, 12 is not that much at all. So we are talking about there being less scarcity here, sorry, higher scarcity, I should say. Now with this, you'll also notice that some of these are on residential streets. So they don't have the capability of going high. So there is certainly an amount of scarcity associated with those. So, you know, we step up from really, really um, sort of mass volume into a little bit more scarcity here. Then we move into townhouses and we start to think about the accommodation needs of people. So what we potentially are looking at here is, you know, the scarcity in these is they're not going to be mass produced in most areas. So we will see duplexes, townhouses, semis, those types of things coming into play and they've got some scarcity. Now, ultimately, we then look at houses and you might think, well, wait a minute, there's not a lot of scarcity in houses when you think about all the green fields and the new estates on the fringes of city. And you're absolutely right because there's no scarcity of land out there. So you need to understand the concept of scarcity in terms of the location of that accommodation. So if you were to think logically, if that accommodation was closer in where the land is scarce and technically there are less and less of this type of accommodation, what happens to the value? It pushes higher and higher and higher. So that's the concept of scarcity. So we do have some challenges around, you know, large amounts of supply coming online for this type of accommodation but we also potentially have challenges up here in house and land packages out in the outer suburbs and the fringes where there's lots of vacant land. We can potentially build quite a lot of those really quickly as well. So the sweet spot of scarcity is potentially this type of accommodation up here, but better location, so located closer into the city. I hope that makes sense. It's pretty logical, but if you always think about supply and demand, we're talking about supply and we're talking about the scarcity of that supply. And if you can take that into your thinking, you're going to be a better investor. I hope you enjoyed this how-to session.